Today's show is being presented with limited commercial interruption thanks to BSU Roofing and Construction. and welcome to the Dwayne Benton Show. Well, I seem to be getting a little bit more comfortable doing this and I'm excited today because I'm talking to a master chef. Mr. Christopher Beavers is here. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Man, thanks for having me. So I've been watching you on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, different things, and I noticed that you've been doing a lot of things around Memphis with this thing they call, I guess, Master Chef. Uh huh. Do you like those shows? Let me ask you that question. Well, uh, I like the shows, but I don't go by that title. Okay. Um, because I think a Master Chef is somebody who has just man he's mastered his craft yeah. and I'm not there yet are you serious yeah man I've seen some of your stuff on Facebook and I'm like if that ain't masterful <laughs> I don't know what is well I appreciate that man but no those master chefs they can go outside and, and, yeah. and take some grass and give you collard greens I don't know how <laughs> they do it well yeah. okay so let's before we get into the things you've done as a chef we're going to talk mm -hmm. back about go back about your history uh when you got started into this what was your desire and passion for it yeah. but you know as they always say and it is the truth everybody has a story that's right what's your story my story man is i come from the bottom like you know you hear people like rappers now saying yeah we got it out the mud well brother i got it from under the mud <laughs> i got it out the mud i'm from yeah. North Memphis. Uh, Born and raised in Memphis. Yeah, a native of Memphis. Yeah. Uh, grew up on 7th Street. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up in the hood, man, but uh, didn't let the hood grow up in me. What was childhood like? It was rough. It was uh, shootouts. It was uh, drug dealers on the corner. It was crackheads, yeah. uh, whatever you, you want to call it, uh, alcoholics. Yeah. It, w it, was, it was really challenging to... Uh, come out of that environment mm -hmm. with aspirations to be something to be something more than the what most popular saying. drug dealer yeah, because yeah. you know a lot of times you, you know growing up you saw them with the nice cars you you know and so becoming a doctor or a lawyer was yeah. a dream for some of us yeah. but at the same time it sometimes didn't seem attainable yeah. you know but but you could easily get into the dope game you know uh, and yeah, yeah. So it, as a teenager, you you could have a lot of money. Did it ever happen to you? No, I never I never sold drugs. I had the opportunity to. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't go. I just God just redirected my life. I didn't go that route. So what do you say to the young person who says, you know, uh, it's knocking at my door, they're trying to get me to do it now? You know, they they hadn't gotten to that place where they deciding what life is going to be. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? I say to them what I say to what I've said to my 18 year old son. Um, I say don't do it and and that sounds cliche you know yeah. so like the Nancy Reagan just say no yes. you know <laughs> uh, but it is a decision yeah it's a decision for every young person for every old person it's a it's a decision no matter who you are no matter your age no matter your ethnicity yeah. you have to decide that you don't want to do that and that you're not going to do that yeah yeah so as we're growing up yeah you're making decisions about your life. So what did what did you say? You want to be a chef? Oh. At, well, at first I did. Well, I did, but at, but it was on the back burner. At first, I wanted to be a barber. Okay. So because I was very talented at cutting hair. So in in high school, I was cutting the principal's hair, the teacher's oh, hair, God. the basketball team's hair, the football Are team's you serious? hair. serious? Other schools, teams. That's a career. <laughs> would come to my house and get their hair cut. Like everybody. Yeah was coming to me and then I was doing the designs and people said that was real popular in the 90s where we would do a, a, a high top fade and then do the design around the 
sides and wow. it was just it was so it was a gift yeah you know I was we were gifted a, a friend of mine me and a friend of mine we would cut hair together and we would cut class and cut hair in the band room mm -hmm. I mean we, would just, this we made a lot of money cut hair I in high like, school yeah wow. and so after I got out of high school I went to barber school and mm -hmm. I com I completed um, but I also had a passion for cooking, so I went to culinary school as well. Yeah, this was what year? Uh, 90, I graduated in 94, so I left and went to, I went to culinary school first, I went, and I came back in 97, and then I went to barber school. Yeah. And so I had, I had those two completions. I was uh, certified in culinary arts yeah. and in barbering. But I, in barbering, I never went to state Nashville to take the state board, even yeah. though I, I was had all my hours. Matter of fact, I had two thousand hours. Yeah. Uh, but I had my culinary certificate, so I just went on and went to culinary. So arts. life is good. Yes. I mean, you got you're pretty much an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because oh, you know, a chef pretty much runs his own sort of yeah. deal. Yeah. 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 That's what you are. You are taking you're talking about being a good steward a chef has to take what he has and multiply it by however many times that he needs to yeah and then he has to take what's left over create something out of that and then multiply that as well wow that's stewardship yeah 101 you learned it seriously yeah, you do and so did you master it I, I want to say, I'm, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm close. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm next yeah. door to the master. It's okay. To yeah. have, it's okay to yeah, have yeah. A make call it a learning process. I right. think we yeah. all, Man. to a degree, have to learn to perfect it. And I guess when you really think you know it all, right. is when you learn you don't know it all. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'll give you an example. So let's say we do baked or roasted chicken mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday. Yeah. And then, and then, so let's say all of it doesn't go. It doesn't even come out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, what can we do with this chicken? We could make chicken salad. We could uh, put it put it in a chicken stock, boil it for a little while, and and reduce it and and tear it yeah. and and make like the pulled chicken sliders, barbecue pulled chicken sliders. Wow. So I mean, so there are just <laughs> you know, a talking. number of things. <laughs> So a number of things you could do, yeah. you know, like when you have leftover stuff, mm -hmm. you just have to know. Or you could do like you could take that pulled chicken and do like a, a, a homemade uh, white chili. So you could do like you could take some. I feel like we should be in the kitchen. Red beans, right. You could take <laughs> navy beans. Yeah. <clears throat> you could take navy beans and, and pulled chicken and white onions and uh and make a white chili like that sounds good man that would be so awesome dude you talking yeah. to the wrong guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm yeah. loving on this so of course i want to talk a little bit more about uh some of the endeavors that you've had you had the privilege to kind of cook for people okay. right that you've had the privilege to cook for in your career we'll take a short break we'll come right back and we'll talk more with chris beavers this guy is an amazing chef you should see his stuff online i have just certainly gained five pounds looking at some of the <laughs> stuff that he cooks Hello, my name is Sherman Brown with BSU Roof Construction. When the elements are hard at work, BSU Roof Construction is working hard for you. We have a 31-point checklist to make sure that the job is done right. Quality in BSU is pretty much the same name. Give us a call at 901-672-7585. BSU Roof Construction, our name is the same as quality. In order to keep your business afloat, you must collect payment for the products or services you render. Unfortunately, not all customers are reliable. If you are a business owner, you likely have very little time on your hands to make those frequent telephone calls or to write letters in an effort to collect delinquent accounts. Hi, I'm Marilyn Mosley with Resolutions Collection Agency, and I have been a professional agent for more than 20 years right here in the Mid-South. They say the older an account is delinquent, the harder it is to collect the debt. Not with Resolutions Collection Agency, where we specialize and resolve any debt by any means. If your demands for payment have been unsuccessful, hiring a Resolutions Collection Agency can be extremely beneficial for your business. Call us today, 901-427-3040. 
That's 901-427-3040. Welcome back. We're talking to Chef Chris Beavers of Asparagus Restaurant right here in Midtown Memphis. And um, this is a very nice place. It's, it feels very intimate, personal. How we come to asparagus and the name. I love asparagus. People always ask me what made me name the place asparagus. Mm -hmm. And I've always tried to be different. I've always tried to, tried to be I guess you could say countercultural. Yeah. And so when I was growing up, I never I don't even remember hearing of asparagus, Me. the vegetable. Yeah, this is true. Um I didn't know I had heard of Brussels sprouts maybe once or twice. I never tasted them, never even saw them in a grocery the grocery stores we went to. Right. Uh they didn't have them at the neighborhood Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> You know, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus. Right. But we grew up with that story. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They didn't have Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. They didn't have asparagus. Yeah. And so when I got older and I started uh, cooking asparagus, when I would, when well, when I worked at fine dining restaurants, asparagus would be on the menu. Brussels sprouts would be on the menu. And I got a chance to cook these vegetables and other vegetables like that I had never heard of before, like butternut squash, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, yeah. you know, so, so, you know, usually when you hear the word squash, you think of yellow yeah, squash yellow, and zucchini, zucchini, but no. So it's completely different texture. Everything is crazy. And so, but as far as asparagus, I wanted to bridge a gap. You know, I wanted to, you know, pull my culture, you know, the way I grew up, I wanted to pull it into my now yeah or into my future mm -hmm. you know so i wanted to take all that i've learned and kind of blend it with where i come from okay and so what i did was i created these seasonings that 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 go on my grilled asparagus and my butternut squash why are we not in the kitchen in, in my, I, <laughs> this question. I think we should be in the kitchen yeah <laughs> But the the staff is back to actually yeah the staff is yeah they're, 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 they're yeah 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 the, the staff is 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 hard at work right yeah, now man. yeah they 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 they're wearing hard hats yeah they're not even chef hats they're wearing hard hats well, it's yeah. a lot of prep when yeah you, when, oh because when you step out it's kind of I hate to compare and and, they, yeah. and, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong it's kind of like the Ben Ahana situation you know <laughs> you go to Ben Ahana they serve you get everything ready and then the chef comes out and he does his deal that's it yeah that's that's that's. That's it in a nutshell, man. I said situation on right, purpose. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So uh -oh. here we are, Asparagus, at Asparagus, the restaurant. Uh, this is reservation only. It is by reservation only yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, so all people have to do is go to our website, thegrilledasparagus.com, okay. and make reservations, or they can make reservations on our Facebook page, yeah. uh, Restaurant Asparagus on Facebook. Yeah. Or they could call me if they have my number. Uh, but but what we're talking about, because I, I, I want to know this because I'm not high end like that I'd like to be. Yeah. But when you talk about booking a chef, mm -hmm. do you just pretty much show up? Or you, you you have to know what, what the party wants. Because, how, I mean, you're not going to do chicken while uh, people are sitting here waiting on 30, 45 minutes of cooking chicken. Well, uh, we're different here. Um, and, and that's what I wanted to bring to the table. I wanted to, I heard about uh, one of my friends who's in the NBA uh, was telling me about this restaurant mm -hmm. in Florida yeah. where when you order sweet potatoes, let's say you order a twice baked sweet potato and a ribeye steak, mm -hmm. well the kitchen staff brings out those ingredients or those items raw. Okay. So they bring a, a, like a bucket of fresh sweet potatoes uncooked. And then they bring out on ice uh, just, uh, just a bunch of ribeye steaks. And, and you can say, I want that sweet potato and that ribeye steak. And they go back and, and they go back and prepare what you wow. pick. And so, I mean, I think that's interesting concept because you're paying your money for it. I mean, you should be able to get what you want. Absolutely. And that's, to me, that's the epitome of customer service. Absolutely. And so that, we're kind of like that here. We're not that far, but we let people mm -hmm. Tell us what they want. So if you look at our menu online and you don't and you don't see anything you like, you could call us or shoot us an email and say, you know what, I got a taste for this tonight. Guess what? We'll send somebody to go out and get it and by the time you get here, it's ready. We'll have it ready. Your your, ready. your your rattlesnake or your alligator or whatever you got a taste for. Okay. We got you. We're not gonna be <laughs> no frog legs for me. Right. <laughs> 
Have you had that? Uh, no. No, I, I've had Gator. That's about it. I, I ain't had nothing. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this business of being a chef. Mm -hmm. You encountered, uh, I guess, a different clientele, some celebrity. Yeah, a, a lot. Sports. Yes. A lot of celebrity, professional athletes, a lot of CEOs, business owners. Man. How do you connect with these people? You know what, man? Word of mouth. I'm just going to be honest. I sound like old fogey, like a dinosaur. It's God. It's his favor. Because I could be sitting, I could be sitting here. You know, they, 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 I, I, I don't remember which uh, lady said it, but she held up an empty calendar and said, this is an entrepreneur's worst nightmare. So I could be sitting here with nothing on my books. I remember one night I was here with nothing on my books. Yeah. It was like 10.30 and I was like, I literally said, God, I need some money. I'm broke. This was a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, and I get my phone rings and this guy goes, hey, this is Isaac Curry. And I'm like, who yeah. is this playing with me? Gospel recording? Yeah. Guys. Yeah. I was like, man, who is this? He's like, no, chef, this is Isaac Curry. I'm here in Memphis uh, shooting a, a, a TV show. And I got a bunch of people with me. We hungry. It's the last minute. We're going to pay you for your trouble. We're going to pay you for your food. What can you do for us right now? <laughs> That's God. Yeah. That's God. Yeah. And so he connected me with Isaac. Just And, 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 I, was, and I was said, man, how did you get my number? Yeah. He was like, uh, we asked who's the best chef around. And somebody said you. You know, they could have they could have named. It's man, we, listen, yeah. Memphis is full of chefs, some of which are better than me. They could have named anybody, but for some reason, God put me on those people's hearts. And I said, just like with, with Anita Baker, this lady sends me an inbox, says, hey, you hear that? You, we're looking for a chef for Anita Baker. She's coming to Memphis. And November last yeah, year. Yeah, well, this was actually in September or October when they sent me the message, when they yeah. found out she was coming. And they were like, uh, she's going to be here next month. We want to know if you're available on such and such a day. I think it was the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Thanksgiving. Yeah, around Thanksgiving. And I was like, if I'm not available, I am now. <laughs> and so, but you know what, man? I was like, how did you get me? And she was like, well, somebody recommended you. And I was like, who? And she connected me with the person who recommended me. I said, ma'am, you've never even had my food. And she was like, well, so many people that have had your food bragging on you. So... I figure you'd be the right person for the job. So, so we do have video of you yes. presenting. Oh yeah, can, can we show that real quick? Yeah, we can let's, show that. Let's show you the video yeah, of yeah. him presenting his his. Well, I don't know what the word they, these chefs use, but his masterpiece. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, I, I don't need nobody standing next to me while. I'm yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> My goodness, that sauce, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Is it good? It's so tender. Mm -hmm. It's just falling off the bone. Falling off yes. the bone. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You are just making connections with all of the artists and people yeah. are knowing your name. But I guess it's the business of being a chef. This is how you really get out there is people sit at your table. Right. And you prepare meals. Exactly. And they decide from that moment, this guy's amazing. But right. a lot of people have not had the experience of sitting in front of a chef. Right. Exactly. You know, I, I don't know why, but I think mm. it's something that everyone should try. Right. That's true. Because a chef is different. He, he is... His food is his canvas. He's an artist, culinary arts. So his, his food is his canvas. Yeah. And the human tongue, uh, normal human being have 10,000 mm -hmm. 10, taste buds. Yes. And so a, a chef wants to hit all of them. Man, every last one, <laughs> if he can. That's all. Awesome. I mean, because when I see people smile, when they eat a dish that I've prepared, when I feel that I've seasoned it just right yeah. and I give it to my client, I'm waiting for their reaction because their reaction to me is everything. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that is gratifying. It is like I've achieved what I set out to achieve. Is it an insult to add salt or pepper to your meal? It is. Like, is it really? I tell people, I mean, we have salt pepper shakers on the table, but I tell people you won't need that. Taste it before you, because some people, when they come in, they're so used to eating bland food, they'll just kill it with salt. And I'll yeah. tell them, yo, before you do that, taste your food. 
It's perfectly seasoned. Taste it. And then they'll taste it and agree with you're you. You're learning. You're yeah. learning. I'm teaching today, y'all. Yeah. Don't insult the chef. Exactly. Doing that. So we talk about uh, entertaining private parties and, and having the experience with the chef. Um, what's your endeavor for the future? What do you want to do? Because again, are you looking to maybe open more restaurants? Are you yeah. looking to what? Do what? What I'm looking to do, man, is expand this brand, this brand asparagus. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're already in another location in Arlington, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we have a nutrition station inside of a fitness center. Mm -hmm. um, it's called, uh, a, well, it's called the, 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 it's called the nutrition station powered by asparagus, but I think they've changed it and put by Chef Chris Beavers or something mm. like that, which I don't want my name on it. I'd rather have the brand on it. Okay. But they do have the logo, but they, okay. you know, they thought it'd be more suitable to put my name. Yeah. Which, okay. But uh, what I want to do, man, yeah, I want to I want to put an asparagus in FedEx form. I want to put an asparagus in Oak Court Mall. I want to put an yeah. asparagus in Bartlett, in Cordova, in Atlanta, in L.A., That's awesome. you know, in Chicago, in New York. Yeah. So I just I want this brand. I mean, everybody else is doing it. Yeah. You know, I mean, every, every I mean, every other, you know, entrepreneur that is in restaurants, that's what they're doing. Where does your heart lie? Does it lie in a restaurant or does it lie in that intimate setting? In the intimacy. And that's what I wanted to create here. That's why I didn't go out and get some big, gigantic uh, commercial property beside the point of, be, of it being $10,000 a month. Yeah. I still didn't want that, in that $2,500 utility bill. Yeah. But honestly, I was on the road with, last year I was on the road with Ted O'Reilly and 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 um, Monica and you name it, uh, Knicks and all these other groups, yeah. Jagged Edge, and we would stop at places like Indianapolis, Indiana, and St. Paul, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and Macon, Georgia, and they would have these bed and breakfasts where it was just when you walked in, it was just beautiful. It was decadent. It was yes. old school. And it felt like you was going to grandma's house, but with restaurant quality food. Right. And I thought, man, I got to bring that concept back to Memphis. I'm sorry, have you ever thought about a bed and breakfast? I, I was going to do that with this, uh, but then I didn't want to do the maintenance on the beds. <laughs> yeah, so, it's a lot to that. Oh, uh, man, that hotel, that hotel, yeah. because you have to keep those rooms up to hotel standard in I didn't want to do that. Yeah, it's so, a lot. Yes. I know. Yeah. Hotel manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, here we are, Asparagus Restaurant. Uh, you're preparing. Uh, you got a big group coming in. I heard some uh, people here a little before we were set up to shoot, get the big party going on here. Yeah, they got 100 people coming. Yeah. And um, so you'll be up cooking all night? I don't know. Oh, no. You don't have to cook all night. That's what you prep for. Yeah. You prep so you don't have to cook all night. A hundred people sounds like a lot, and it is a great deal of people. It is a hundred people is a lot of people. Uh, but at the same time, if you're prepared mm -hmm. to feed a thousand people, yeah. you, can, you can feed them if you're prepared and you're organized. Yeah. That's what it's about. Are you into mentoring? I have. I've mentored several teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. What's your message for them? What do you want to show them? What do you want them to learn? I tell them, be passionate about whatever you do or do well. Let me change that. Let me reverse that. Do what you're passionate about. Mm. Because if you're doing anything or if you, if you go get a job because it pays a lot of money, yeah. you'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. You'll buy some things that you've always wanted to buy. Yeah. And you'll meet some people um, and you'll pretend to be happy for a while, yeah. but you'll be burned out so quick. In yeah. a couple of years, you will be burned out. That passion that God put in your heart, that, that thing that you love to do that everybody's yeah. telling you, you can't make any money doing that. Right. But you know what? They couldn't make any money doing it or somebody else couldn't, but they're not you. Yeah. Because if God gave you that, I heard um, the, the guy from the, the pastor in Dallas say, Jakes? no, the other one, um, Tony Evans, Tony Evans. Mm -hmm. He said, wherever, whenever God gives you a vision, he gives provision. He provides. I, I can test it. When he guides, he provides. So. Whatever God has given you a passion for, he's also 
going to provide for that. He's going to make that means yeah. happen for you. You know what I mean? I know he's exactly. going to meet the need. Yes, he will. And that and that's what has happened to me. Like God has always. This is the this is that point we talked about where I look in the camera. Yeah. Talk to him. God will meet your need when it seems like he can't. He has always met my need in my darkest hour. My goodness. I mean, I'm saying when when it seemed like the bottom had fell out of everything, there was God. Yeah. He was he was there the whole time. Yeah. And so that's what I say to young people. I tell them, do what you're passionate about, the money will come because you'll be so good at what you do. I tell my son, and I know I'm talking a lot. Don't talk. But I tell my son, what I told my son before he left to go to college, I said, I want you to think about the man who invented the paper clip. The paper clip. Mm -hmm. Or the man who invented the rubber band. Their wives must have thought, you're crazy. Imagine a guy, I mean, when there was no such thing as a paper clip, coming home with this twisted piece of thin metal yes. going, baby, we're going to be rich. Yeah. And she's going, what is that? <laughs> it's a paper clip. Right. But guess what? Paper clips are worldwide. Rubber bands. Worldwide. If you're passionate, if you do what's in your heart, what's in your mind, if you do that, you don't know where it's going to take you. Yeah. You don't, man. I've been, I've cooked for, I mean, you name them, I probably cooked for them. That's amazing. I was this close to cooking for what, Michelle Obama. What is the what is the feeling when you're done? I mean, I just have to know because you're cooking for some some amazing people. Yeah. Uh, recognizable names. Right. And when you're finished and they come and say, "Oh my God, this was amazing." How does that really make you feel? Honestly, I, I'll tell you the the selfish. I don't. I want to say I say the selfish part of me, uh -huh. but the selfish part of me wants that picture. So I have this rule when we're in front of celebrity clientele, high-end clientele, nobody can pull out their phones, right? Unless we have permission from, you know, the celebrity, mm -hmm. whatever. So, but I'm waiting for the moment when they, when they say, hey, chef, you guys want to get some pictures? Because they're going to say it. But if you're good, yeah. they're going to say it because they know you're waiting on that moment. But... I'm waiting on that moment because not just so I can post it on social media. Yeah. I want to post it on social media. Yeah. I want my 600 likes. Right. I'm, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but right, right. more importantly, I want to capture that moment. Yeah. Because once that moment is gone, it's gone. I also see it as elevation in your yeah. in your ministry. Yeah. I know you call it a business, but it's a ministry. Yeah. And to have Michelle Obama sit at the table and say, this guy. I really wish, man. I was this out. close to cooking for her, man. This close. Wow. And she couldn't, for whatever reason, she didn't come to Memphis. But I was hired. I had been selected to be her chef. And it just, the same thing with Kim Kardashian, which she was here. With the lady. Uh, yeah, yes. with the court battle thing. And I was hired, and I was on my way to do Kim's food. And the people around celebrities are so territorial, but her the, her liaison wouldn't give me the address. And so just to be blatantly honest wow. with you. Wow, that's crazy. Well, so they're so afraid, but let me tell you though, I won't call the name of the news station, but when I was waiting in traffic or parked, waiting to get the address so I could go out there one of the news stations called me and went, yo, Chef Chris, we heard you cooking for Kim. Where is she? Oh, my goodness. And I was oh. like, how could you possibly know that? These guys are good. Today's show is being presented with limited commercial interruption thanks to BSU Roofing and Construction. Hello, I'm Sherman Brown. If you need a new roof, BSU Roofing and Construction can help. BSU Roofing and Construction is factory certified and we offer five times the warranty of traditional roof installation. Call for a free roof inspection at 901-672-7585. None of this would be possible without a very important uh, business partner, my, well he's a silent partner, but uh, Mr. Sherman Brown, he's the one um, who took the chance. You know, uh, I wouldn't I didn't have all the financial to pay for the property, uh, but Sherman Brown, the author of the book, uh, The Bullet in Me. Me, yes, 
he's the one that took the chance on Restaurant Asparagus, and here we are. So, man, I said a big thank you, a big shout out to him. We've talked, we've had a good time, now yes. we just need to eat. Right, exactly. And that'll seal the deal. <laughs> right. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next Dwayne Benton Show. Thanks.